Yeah, our largest furniture store probably in the maybe the East Coast, but at least um, in the state of Virginia. Right. It's called Haynes, and Please. we're going over to look for a new sofa. But if you noticed, and a lot of few people come in here, we'll talk about it. You can say hi, Sand. Hello, everyone. But why would you say hi, Sand, when you're Sand? <laughs> <laughs> you used to say it, everybody, which you did. You did properly. Very good. Thank you. So anyway, the title of this is basically, how do you walk out of a job politely? I've been dealing with a cleaner in another part of the country. I'm not going to mention any names. I'm not even going to mention the situation, okay? But what I will mention is that she gave the hints that it's probably better not to do the job. But he went against his gut feeling, and that's really the key right there is the gut feeling, I think. If you get the gut feeling, don't go with it. Well, I think you felt like you felt like you're kind of caught in between a, like a pickle, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, you know. it's it's kind of hard just to walk out on a client, and I think that's where he was, you know. And basically, how do you walk out of a client politely? And so, I feel like uh, I was asking my wife, and she had a good answer to that. Um, why don't Why don't we let you take it first of all? If I could spit it out, all right? How would you well, want like somebody? If, if you go into a home and you feel like everything you say or do you're getting feedback from the client that no matter what you say or do is correct on their end there's just no communication that's working properly you're not gonna go make them happy you feel like right Right. and i feel like sometimes maybe that the job that y'all do you want to see the results and usually after the results then, then clients are happy True. however there are some few that just <laughs> no matter what you do it just they're not clicking it's not going well with them and they just they're not happy with you in a way, so they're not going to be happy with the job. Yeah, so, and, and let me preface it generally. When you say few, Sand, it's maybe one or two jobs a year at the most. I, so it should be a rare situation. I okay. will say this briefly because I, before I forget, I remember years ago, Robert had a customer, I think, similar to what we're talking about, and he literally started rolling up the hoses. Yes. And the lady came out and started unrolling his hoses. Did no, she, she do that? Or yeah, she I, I was pulling the hoses she out. I started to pull the hoses in, and she went out there and started pulling the hoses back in the house. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what, I knew I hit crazy then, you know what I mean? But my, but I, I, she gave me the signs earlier on, and it could be a male too, by the way. Right. Yeah, especially yeah. if you're a female and some guy gives you, you know, the EBGBs. Yeah, you might want to get on out of there, you know? So, in this day and time, you guys got to be careful. So, so okay. yeah, you're right. But go back ahead. to answer the question. All right, go ahead. Sorry, I'm delaying a little bit because I'm trying to drive No, safely. please. Yeah, please do. So, um, this is my video. But basically, I think if that is the issue that you're having a problem with somebody that's not connecting, communicating well, I think it's best to say up front is say, I just think ma'am, somebody else might be able to take care of the things you need to have your concerns. done. Your, right, concerns properly. So I think I'll just, you know, go ahead and pack up and leave and, and let you choose someone else. I think that would be better to do than get in a situation where it's harder to get out of once it's Take it right started. here, Santa Melcher Highway. But you know what? You mentioned pack up and leave. I can't agree with packing up and leaving. I think you should have found that out before you packed anything oh, in there. That, yeah, that's you should true. You should be able to determine that in the walkthrough. So that goes to show how critical the walkthrough is. The walkthrough is so important, and that's when you should be able to be able to tell, you know, when's the right time or the wrong time, you know, to do the job. It's getting hot in here. You got my seat heater on. Lord, it's almost seven degrees here in Virginia Beach today. You know where the button is? Oh, yes, I do. I got my hands full. I'm holding the camera here. Did I turn on here? Thanks, Dave. Appreciate that. Dave's a good talk. Yes, take it right here. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. So, you know, the point is, when is the right time to take a hike? I would take a hike, and I learned my lesson, like you said many years back, before you bring the things in. Because I had brought my hoses in, and their lady, what does she do? Okay, let's see. Joe Reichardt says, be polite as long as you can. We had something where the client was aggressive from the start. Be polite. Let me see if I can read the rest of that. Hold on. And this is, um, they were still aggressive. Wow. Just be polite and say, I will pass on the job. That's probably That's a good a way to say word. it. Yeah, yeah, I like, I like that. that. Keep on going job. straight. You got to turn right in about two or three lights, by the way. To the right. Actually, it's left. You're right. Wow. Left is right. Yeah. Women are usually right, right? <laughs> Oops. Somehow I just got rid of the messages and I didn't mean to do that. Okay, so maybe I like somebody. The word pass though. Yeah, I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna way. pass the job on. You know, no matter what you do, it's gonna be a little bit awkward. But I think the least amount of awkward you can make it, the better off you are. It's kind of like, you know, if you got something on your shirt and somebody says something, and you get all flustered. 
Well, it makes the situation worse. You spilled some food or something like that. Because, oh, dang on, I'm going to go and take care of that. Or food in your teeth. Yeah, so you just act like it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Just say, you know, I, I don't know if I can, I don't think that I'm the right person to handle your concerns. I'm going to pass on this job, but I wish you well. And if you have any questions, feel free to, you know, let me know. Maybe leave the door open a little bit for, for some communication. Because in this day and time, I think if you just leave, leave hard and cruel, it's not going to go over too well. No, and you don't want them to write a bad review just because of that. Yeah. Just because of the yeah, situation that's not going well for either side. Yeah, where they haven't even used it. And here they're going to write you a bad review. That's going to kind of suck, right? Geez. So, anyway, I, I really feel bad for this cleaner. He's going through a bad situation. And um, uh, I, I want to say this, too. I think this is important. He wanted to respond fast. I would say don't never respond quickly because if you give a knee-jerk reaction, you're probably going to say or do something wrong. As I was mentioning to him, document everything. If you think there's going to be a situation, document and then document and then document again. But I also think that you want to respond and acknowledge them at least to state that you'll look into it. Yes. So you're not putting them too far off because right. you don't want to make them get them better right. that they've already... Yeah, yeah, well, that's kind of what I meant, not here. Yeah. Straight heads, though. I am, oh. All right, you might, have to, you might have to put the GPS on for you. <laughs> this is what happens when you do videos I'm while you're driving. That's why I'm doing that. this. So, because when I drive, I don't like doing a video while I'm driving because it distracts you. It's not good. And here you're getting distracted. I in am, it. I was getting into it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's because we're kind of hitting a subject you can kind of relate to, you know? Right. Actually, Sand, it is to the right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I told you it was. Uh -oh. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm usually right. And when I'm not right, I am still right. <laughs> yeah, how did, my, how did my boss used to say it? You know, there's two rules, you know. I can't remember exactly how he said it. He said, you know, I'm always, you know, I'm always right. And rule number two is, even if I'm not right, I'm still right. He said something like that. This is it. Yep, take this right, right here. That's a lot of rights. So anyway, somehow I didn't know you were able to do this, but I think I slid over while we were driving the, the comments. Uh, so if anybody can make a comment, uh, maybe, oh, hey, wait a minute. I see a little comment button. Hold on. Don't move yet. Here we go. I'm just going to say hello. Uh, one thing I was going to bring out too, like for example. Let's see if that works. Oh, yes, that brings it back up. Check that out. Yeah, I'm smarter than the average like Even when people call you, I had, <laughs> this is years ago, I had someone call and I was answering the questions as best I could. And then they just started cursing, Definitely. like they just oh just yeah cursing whatever. And I said I'll be happy to talk to you. I warned them several times to please, you know, change their tone or whatever, or just I'll be happy to help if they stop. And they hadn't cursing. even set a job, or did they? Was, no, was this a problem? I think they did. No, didn't even set a and job. So, Keep going. One more. So I gave them several times. Finally, I, I hung up on them because I was just I've had enough. And those are the ones you just want to make sure you don't even set. <laughs> Yeah, you know, but because that was far, I think I could think of two people out of 30 years. Right, 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 right. Happened. Nobody has, there you go, Ikea right there. Nobody has the right to demean or talk down to you. You don't have to put up with that. If they're using a certain language, you should try to nip it in the bud. And if it doesn't work, then hey, here's my, here's my, here's my reasoning on it. When reason leaves the conversation, that's reason to leave the conversation. Yeah. Man, that sun is coming right on the side over here. I'm glad when you turn that corner there. So anyway, people usually give off certain signs, certain signals, and when you're getting those signals, listen to those signals. You know, basically, you know, you have a sixth instinct, you know, a sixth sense, right? And it's your instinct. And if your instinct is telling you this customer is going to be problematic or, you know, you know, Mrs. Jones, I don't really feel like I can handle, handle your concerns. You're probably going to need somebody who's a little more, you know, comprehensive in this subject or something like that. You know, you don't want to downplay yourself, but you're going to have to put it off. And I think the longer you wait, the worse it is. It's kind of like um, breaking off a relationship, right? You know, if you're, my wife says, if somebody didn't know if I ever died and she was dating again, I don't remember if you remember saying this or not. She said, if, if I ever died and she was dating again, if a guy didn't know in six months that, you know, that he was serious, that she don't want nothing to do with him. So it's better to put them off then than what dating a couple years and then tell them, look, you know, this ain't going to work out. So that's just, that's just an example. So I think the sooner you can let people know, the better off all the parties are and the less hurt there's going to be. Because you drag somebody right. on for two years, there's going to be some hurt. Uh, I had a friend of mine, and I'm not going to mention his name, thinking he's going to live in this area anymore. 
but he was dating a girl and he dated her for three years he was engaged to her and she was really ready to get married and stuff like that and then he drops her and goes and marries somebody else and i'm going like dude I, and he said i don't know why she's upset i'm going like dude you dated her for three years you said you're going to marry her she had her heart set she's ready to go and you drop her and you were wishy-washy you should have dropped her nice and early it would have been nicer nice thing to do and that can go both ways that's just not one party but i also think too like for example i had a lady call today and she's used us twice and twice she had an issue someone had scratched some of her tile when we were doing the tile cleaning that was oh, fixed that was stone yes yes stone yeah yes somebody had somebody had moved the crb incorrectly over stone which i'm not even i don't even know why he even used it a on year that. and a half ago yeah and i had to go out there and polish that stone I actually almost two job. years february and then yeah and she still called back she huh? called back but we did her carpets too in the same month and she said oh i didn't want to call and tell you but somehow her leather that's right bottom that's right had gotten nicked and I, she doesn't know if it was from the wand or mm. something and so i said oh no problem i, I said i you know next time feel free to call we want to know right away so we can try to rectify things and take care of them. and the technicians are more than happy too if they're not aware of it you know to bring it to their attention so those are the kind of clients that i personally feel like i like to keep because she's using us again i also said i'll There's give her a discount right Wait for using us again yeah, you know, even though we had a couple little problems, we rectified the problems. Right. She was happy. She's a good paying client. Hey. But you know. I also wanted to make her feel comfortable. And I said, look, I, how about this? I'll, I'll go ahead and set another technician there. Yeah, Usually I don't do that because sometimes Robert will move the jobs around. But this time I made a note to specifically send a certain technician because I don't want her to feel uncomfortable with the other technician that did the job. Even though he did a great job. Oh, she yeah. said he did a good job. That's but I just right. still didn't want to put that awkwardness there for her. So well, on top of, and and also the technician too, because he was kind of he was disheartened. It really hurt his feelings that he had scratched it. Right. And I tell you what, the scratches were minor, but they were scratches, so she still had a legitimate concern. So I can't say she didn't have a legitimate concern. And I had to go out there and I had to polish the floor. So it's no big deal because we do stone polishing also. But you know, I agree with Sandy. This was an after after that was an after after the fact right, issue. Right. Right. Where but I'm just she wasn't giving us the signs ahead of time. So we addressed that immediately. But we're talking more about, and I, I think that's so good you brought that up. We're still talking more about people who, who you do the initial walkthrough right. and you feel it. This guy said he felt it from the first couple sentences. She said, the first couple sentences, she gave him a clue that maybe he should have walked, you know, passed on the job. He went, but he went past that. Then as he was setting up, she gave him some signals. And then as he was doing the job, he got more signals. So, you know, at least, good Lord, the three-strike rule. You know what I mean? <laughs> three strikes and you're out. Good Lord, get on out of there, right? You know, hit the road, Jack. But he didn't, so now he's having to have to work through the problems that he's having. He's called me. I'm helping him. And I don't mind helping him. And he's, But he's kicking himself because he, he didn't listen to his gut instinct. And that's what I'm trying to get everybody here to do, to avoid, avoid making the same mistake when that sixth sense and that gut feeling tells you that there's going to be a problem listen to it and as joe had said earlier pass on the job right pass on the job yeah i like that i think that's great well i appreciate everyone's comments uh we're sitting in front of ikea now i guess i'm gonna have to walk in this joint i don't want to you, you know but you, to. You, i don't no, you might be waiting a couple hours. Ouch. What I don't like, you know, what I do like and I don't like about Ikea is the way they've got it set up right is they've got it set up where you, they get you in one area and then you can't get out of the whole building until you shop the whole building. So are you almost guaranteed to buy something? Yeah, but if you owned Ikea, I would probably do the same thing. I'm, I'm <laughs> saying it's ingenious, but I don't want to be stuck in the mousetrap. I was there a few weeks ago and two, ta two people I've heard on the phone was telling whoever they were talking to, Say stated, I can't figure out how to get out of here. I can't. Out of here. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's pretty bad. You can't get out. Just buy something, and that's it. You know, that's how you get out. You got to buy something. Got to figure out how to get to the end. It's crazy. Yeah, it's like it's like a maze. It really is. They should call it IKEA maze. Uh, IKEA home fashions. This should be. Is that fashions? What is that word? Honey. Oh, furnishings. Excuse yeah. me. Hey, look, half the yeah, signs block. I see that too. Yeah. Okay, give me credit now. I see the other half. Okay. Home <laughs> fashions. <laughs> Home furnishings. I saw that now. That's Yikes. Mm. Oh, all right. You ready? I'm just about ready. So anyway, it really is a maze to get in and out of this place right here. And you know what? What I don't like, and uh, I'd like you to mention this before we go, Sam, 
is we had bought something here and my wife wanted to take it back, right? Hey, what's up, Jesse? How's it going, man? I'm sure it's going to be, pal. I'm looking forward to it also. Tell them what you did not like about their customer service. Customer service. Well, and how important first of it is. all, the one here in Norfolk, Virginia does not have a local number that you can actually call. You have to call the 1888 number, whatever. Okay. I should know by heart. I called it too many times. Yeah. And when you get that person, then if you, here's what I learned too. When at first, they would ask you if you want to do a survey. Here. If you want to do a survey that you have to push, like, when I kept pushing number two to tell them, like, or no, I don't want to, it would hang up. The line would drop. Then I just said, mm. okay, well, I'll put number one. I'll give them my, my report back. <laughs> and they stayed on the line. But there wow. was an so issue they with you to give a right to almost give a, re a review mm -hmm. and it's very difficult because matter of fact i was here a few weeks ago measuring out rooms and certain things and just kind of going over a few things well when i had gotten home i'm like oh man i want to call that one lady and talk to her again and ask her do they come out and measure or do i have to buy something first or whatever and i can't do that you have to call on one 800 number whatever that's not even here locally you get different people so it's a big runaround and so many times the line would drop or they would say they have to transfer me to somebody else and kept getting the run around. To make a long story short, we had bought a, um, a sofa that we weren't really sure how long we wanted to keep it or whatever. Until we found what we wanted, right, right. exactly. And then we said, okay, well, let's just keep it for this one room we're, we're in that's kind of like a, a just hangout room versus let's, another Let's room. look at what Jeff said here. He says, as a professional, even though you see signs, you feel if you do a great, great job, that will outweigh the concerns or the issues. Now, I, I, I will agree with that to a certain degree. Now, I think, we, let's not get it confused, Jeff, with a picky client. I don't mind picky clients. Well, picky clients can make you better. Yes, yeah, and they can also make you a lot of money. Right, do you? Because they'll refer a lot of people and stuff, and they'll make you raise your game, you should say. Right. I don't know about better, it just makes you raise your game, makes you dot your I's and cross your T's. But what we're talking about is somebody who's giving you the signs that no matter what you do, you could jump through hoops, you know? You could jump through fire, you could, you know, put brand new carpet in, and she's still going to complain about that. So if they're giving you that type of signs, that's the ones you want to be careful of. And that's the ones you don't want to just go in blind and dumb. Oh, well, let me see your carpet, lady. Okay, I'm looking at it. Yeah, it looks like carpet to me. Yeah, I'll take care of this for you. Yeah, no, you want to be asking questions, listen for her responses. If she gives concise responses, she's like she's going to be, um, you know, affable, basically easy to get along with. But she basically, she most clients just want you to be a nice person and clean the carpets and get out of the house, right? Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear all your personal problems and you know, stuff like that. But if they start loading all their problems on you or telling you how to do your job better or giving or, or, or taking over the situation, then that, that, that's a problem. Right. I would think too, like there's a certain stain or something you're, you're bringing to their attention that you know it might have to have a cookie cut out or repair and they're insistent, no, they want you to clean it. They want it out. You can try it, but you also probably should have them sign off on something stating that they understand that you'll do the best you can cleaning it first. But if there's an issue, then this is the second solution to it. And if, you know, if you feel in that little difference, then I think that might be a good time to not do anything because if they're not willing to go that extra step, then that's when you probably would want to not do the job too. Yeah, yeah, we ain't Helen Keller, Jerry Falwell. You ain't getting a miracle lady. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but we're going to make it look the best it possibly can look. And that's kind of the things that I like to bring out to them. Like I said, uh, I'm not talking about picky clients. I'm not talking about clients that are hard to please. That's fine. And you can, you know, because I've had customers who will look over my shoulders. Last thing I'm going to bring out here. I've had customers, and I know a lot of guys on here say, well, I don't like a customer looking over my shoulder. I love a customer looking over my shoulder. Knock yourself out. Because I want them to see a true professional, a consummate professional is delivering a job like nobody else is going to do. It's going to be almost like artwork to them. I've had people who I can tell they're going to watch me every inch of the way. I and they watch me. This thing I know after one room, they're gone. But yet if I send a technician out there, they'll watch them every single room. So, you know, it's all in how you're, you know, how you come across. And don't feel bad about people being picky and stuff like that, you know. So, well, the ones we're concerned more about is the ones who are going to be much more problematic. And I don't want to go into too much detail because I, I'm not trying to out this person and the situation he's going through. And I feel like we're gonna get through it, but it didn't have to happen. He could have avoided it. Just like Ikea. We could have avoided this. If we went to Haynes in the first place, instead of walking through the mousetrap, and now we gotta go back through it a, a second and third well, time. Well, here's the situation with customer service. I had paid for something for through a credit card, mm. returned the item, and all of a sudden I get in the mail the other day, a gift card 
and I don't want a gift card. I had specifically stated I want it back on my credit card. And they said the only way I can get that rectified if I personally come down here, spend and another hour or two hours to get my thing put back on the credit card. So an that's hour, the, two hours? Might not be that long, yeah. I'm saying half an hour drive here. Yeah, had drive here, that's true. There's an true. hour right there. Well, Chris, you got to be careful of that, Chris. He said he he, he met a man to a guy who was a carpet cleaner. He let the guy clean his carpets himself. But the problem you have with that is you got to be careful because then you got a liability if you're not careful. If he hurts himself using your equipment, right. but it's in his house, I don't know how that would work, but it's your equipment, but it's homeowner's insurance policy, you know. I don't know. You know what? I'm burning his arm or something on your hose or yeah. free spraying and then the dog's in front of him or whatever. I don't know. It's just a lot of situations yeah. I think that could come up when you let Things have changed a lot since the 80s, my man. Yes. That's what I tell true. him. Listen, you know, the 80s are gone. I remember we were in the 80s. Is that when we got married in the 80s? Yes. Yeah. Just a long time. Wow. We've been married for 38 years. 38 years minus whatever this year is right now. I can't go back that far. I think we forgot after so many years. Yeah, I can't remember the year we were married, but it's been 38 years. That's craziness, isn't it? Okay, anyway, well, you heard it from us, and I uh, hope everybody's having a great day. Hope you had a great year, and more than likely, I'm going to go on live tonight and talk about the top five uh, threads of the week. We have some good ones. So I'll see everyone later on tonight. Just kind of wanted to bring this out here. How do you walk out politely? You want to do it nice and early. You might want to say you want to pass on the job. Don't wait too long if your gut's giving you the reason or the feeling to get on out in that house and move on to the next job. Because there's lots of great customers out there, but every once in a while, and it should only happen, if it happens more than once or twice a year, it might not be the customer. <laughs> That's the problem. If it's happened five or 10 times a year, you might be the problem, okay? All right, you know what I mean? So keep that in mind. All right, well, thanks a lot, everyone. Bye. Have yourself a great day now. Take care. That was fun.